Last month, I released a video of the top five most watched Simon Dan videos. I'd really like to continue this series, so I've decided there's gonna be a top five science video every month. However, I want to steer away from Flat Earth for these sort of things, and I wanna do something a little bit more entrenched in actual science. So today, I bring you the top five largest moons in the solar system. Hello all and welcome along to this special episode of Fun Science Based Top 5 Lists. My name is Simon Dan, thank you very much for joining me. Yes, this month we'll be taking a look at natural satellites and in particular the solar system's biggest. So without further ado, let's kick this off with a very familiar one. In at number 5 is the Moon. Yes, our own satellite is the fifth largest moon in the solar system with an average diameter of 3,474 kilometers. As most of you know, the moon is tidally locked in synchronous rotation, and this is due to the gravitational interaction between the two bodies. This is the reason why there is a side of the moon that we never see, because it pretty much takes the same amount of time to orbit Earth as it does to rotate once. Now, Apollo 17 actually took up an instrument with it called the Lunar Atmospheric Composition Experiment, and it actually found that the moon does have a very tenuous atmosphere. It detected small amounts of helium, argon, neon, ammonia, methane, and carbon dioxide. Let's not get too excited though. Here on Earth, the volume of space taken up by this dye, you would probably find 10 billion billion molecules. In the same amount of volume on the moon, you'd have less than a million. And that is considered a very good vacuum here on Earth. Recently, the US and China have stated they want to put humans back on the moon. Now this is a new space race as far as I'm concerned, and I for one can't wait. Okay, in at number four is Io. Io is one of the four Galilean moons and has an average diameter of 3,643 kilometers, putting it only slightly larger than our own moon. It is the closest of the four large Galilean moons and orbits at a distance of approximately 422,000 kilometers. The most amazing thing about Io is it's known to be the most volcanically active body in the solar system. We have discovered over 400 volcanoes on Io, with up to 150 erupting at any one time. This picture was taken by NASA's Galileo spacecraft. The reason for Io's intense volcanic activity is down to our old friend gravity again, and the key is Io's position. Having a supermassive planet like Jupiter on one side of you, and three large moons orbiting with you on the other, means that Io is stretched and pulled so much that the rock bulges up and down by up to 100 metres. This in turn causes immense friction in the moon's interior, which generates the heat required for its volcanic activity a genuinely amazing part of the solar system. Okay, up next and in at number three, we have another Galilean, Callisto. Callisto comes in with an average diameter of 4,820 kilometers. The outermost Galilean satellite, Callisto orbits Jupiter a distance of 1.8 million kilometers and has one of the most cratered surfaces in the solar system. Callisto is thought to not be geologically active, however, Regular fluctuations in the Moon's magnetic field has led planetary scientists to believe there is a subsurface salty ocean up to 100 kilometers down. Callisto's formation, as with the other three Galilean moons, is thought to be partly because of Saturn. During the formation of the early solar system, Saturn's gravitational influence pushed planetesimals, like little tiny baby planets, towards the inner solar system. This means there was enough of them in and around Jupiter's orbit for the Galilean moons to form. Right, only two more to go, and in at number two, not quite taking the top spot, is Saturn's largest moon, Titan, with a diameter of 5,150 kilometers. Titan brings to the table the only substantial atmosphere of any moon in the solar system. 
It consists primarily of 94% nitrogen and 5.5% methane with a pressure about 60% greater than here on Earth. However, due to its size, its gravity can't cling on to the atmosphere as well as the Earth does, which means its atmosphere extends up to 600 kilometers into space. Perhaps the most extraordinary thing about Titan is just how Earth-like it is. It is the only body in the solar system other than us where you have liquid activity on the surface. It's cold on Titan, minus 180 degrees C, but not quite cold enough to freeze methane. That means there are methane clouds, methane rain, and even methane lakes. It is thought that due to the atmospheric nitrogen ratio on Titan, that it formed around about the same time as the Sun and migrated to its position in Saturn's orbit at a later date. So that brings us to the largest moon in the solar system, in at number one, and taking the top spot is another Galilean giant, Ganymede, coming in at a massive 5,268 kilometers in diameter. It's so big that it's larger than the planet Mercury and quite unbelievably, almost 78% the size of Mars. Ganymede is a fully differentiated body with an iron core, a silicate mantle and a rocky ice surface. And this gives the moon a magnetic field about 1% of that of Earth's. Ganymede does actually have a very thin atmosphere of oxygen and even ozone, but there's nowhere near enough of it to support any forms of life. We also know that Ganymede was once volcanically active, and this is down to the two distinct surface materials. 60% of the surface consists of material that is light in colour and is thought to have been tectonically recycled due to tidal heating, much like Io. This means that 60% of the surface of Ganymede is younger than the other 40%, a point backed up by the fact the darker parts of the surface is much more heavily cratered, indicating a much greater age. The European Space Agency has a mission called JUICE going up in 2022, but unfortunately it won't reach the moons until 2029. So we've got to wait a bit longer before we can unlock some more secrets to Ganymede. Right, that brings this episode of Scientific Top 5s to a close. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And if you have any ideas yourselves on actual scientific top fives I can do, then please let me know in the comments. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great start to the week tomorrow, and I'll see you on Tuesday for some Martian fun. Until then. <laughs>